Hello everybody and welcome back to the Center for Stingray Biology. Today we got some newborn pups and I'm gonna take you along. Come on. Let's see. So I actually found these pups earlier this morning and uh, I was had a really busy morning and finally now I have the free time to pull them out. Can you show them real quick right there? They're all huddled up in the back over there. Yeah, and there's one kind of upside down, you see it? So I think uh, there's, a, there's a stillborn over there, but we have a total of seven pups, uh, six live and one stillborn. So we're gonna pull them up now. I did find uh, sperm floating around in the water earlier today. So uh, I'm pretty sure that the female did get remated. Um, show them the mom, the mom is right here. That's the mom right there up against the wall. Um, I don't, I see some bite marks on the side of the disc, but not much. But if you look at the big one over there, the Henley eye, there's a lot of bite marks along the, the side of the disc. That's been happening over the last couple of days. And this one was in the, the tank next door right here where we had to move her over. So obviously some males are getting frisky with her. So hopefully she uh, is pregnant as well. But, um, Let's start pulling these guys up. This is my custom made net, right? Where I took a regular net and I just zip tied it to this long pole so I have the reach to uh, get back there. So let's start with pup number one. I think while you can come to this side, I'm gonna see a little better. It's a good size litter and the pups are uh, a very good size. They're not too small and uh, not too big. This is actually the size that I like um, when they're born. Sometimes when the pups get too big, I worry that the female is going to have trouble uh, birthing, right? But at the same time, I don't want pups too small because then I have, a, I have a hard time, you know, keeping the pups alive. To me, this is the best size. They, they are about, I wanna say what? One, two, three, four and a half. Four and a half borderline five inches. All right, so I already shown you the fish and I'm checking out the, the sex of it. It is a male. All right, so the first one is a male. I'm gonna put it in this tree that I have ready for them. And we are just gonna work through each single pup and check out the sexes of them. You know, quite honestly, I still have never been able to truly figure out why I have stillborns like that one back there when I get to it. I, I took a, a look at it earlier already, you know, and you can see it's fully developed and uh, color and pattern wise, everything is there. It's just that it's dead. So, I'm kind of wondering, you know, did it just die through a birth complication? Or, or did like an adult ray attack it earlier after it was born? This one's very nice too. And it is a female. Now, you know, I do have multiple males in this tank, right? Let me show you real quick. Um, I have this one right there, that's a male, and the guy back there next to the mother on the left with the, the kind of the rings. I have these two males in here. Um, and judging, you know, if I had to take a guess by looking at the pattern of these pups, I am inclined to say that that one right there is the father this time around um, because of the same type of density of the spots. I see it in these pups as well. So I believe in this particular case, the male is that one right there. Because I think uh, in the previous batches, um, I think it might have been the other male because the spots were bigger and more spaced out. So I kind of use that as a gauge to judge, to try to figure out who's the, the father uh, of each batch. All right, so we got a male and a female so far. And Still got four more to 
to go. You see the, 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 the dead one is kind of drifting right there in the middle of the tank. And I, I will get to that one last. And we'll examine that one and talk a little bit more about that one. So let's get these live ones out first. This one's very nice too, nice spotting. This one has higher, this one has higher contrast than the first two. And uh, looks more on the black diamond side. Oh look, we, we got a, we got a little piece of uh, sperm floating in there, right there, that, that little white piece. But, okay, so you guys see this pup, right? Now, it kind of contradicts what I said earlier. Because now if I look at this pattern, I would tend to think that it's this male right here. Show everybody, right? Because now it's got that similar look as that one. So now I'm a little bit confused. So you know what, why don't I finish pulling out everybody first and then I'll make the decision at that time who I think could be, oh I didn't look at the sex, uh, who could be the father. And this one is a male. Because I always wonder in this tank, because I've got multiple females pregnant and sometimes we've had like split batches uh, meaning two males can make the same female and then um, she's carrying one litter but it's actually from two different fathers. Or sometimes there's just another female that coincidentally gives birth the same day. Okay. Or, you know, I just don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just guessing everything. That, yeah, <laughs> that's... <laughs> pretty much a good way to sum it up as well but you know I just try to extrapolate from experience so this one's pretty cool nice big spots kind of shows some rings in there and uh, this one I don't know who it resembles so. and it's a male as well so wow we got one two three males right I think so yeah three males Oh. And one female. Uh, where are they? One in each corner. Okay. Come on, little fella. And, you know, there's a way that I can tell if they were, like, literally just born or born hours ago. Okay? If they were newly, like literally freshly born, they're still kind of lost in this tank and they're like drifting all over the place. That's kind of how I can tell that it's uh, really literally just born. But, and that's what they looked like this morning when I found them. But see, so now they're all huddled up in the back, right? And what that means is they've been around in this tank long enough to know um, where to go to get a little bit of, of, of refuge. And that's usually always in the back corners. So that's why right now, as I'm pulling them out, all of them are, are all in the back. Wow, that one's really nice. I think I have really high hopes for this one. And it's a female, of course. Lovely little girl. Okay, and as I, I talked about in, in, in earlier videos, and you guys see from um, these uh, newborn videos, you can't expect them to be all black when they are first born, okay? Uh, this is a newborn coloration. They're literally infants, you know, like little babies, okay? And I always like to make examples comparing back um, to like people and humans so that we can relate better. A newborn baby is not gonna look the same as what it's gonna look like when, when, it, when, when they grow up to be 10 years old, 16 years old, 25 years old, there's different stages of development, right? So you can't expect a newborn baby to look, you know, all black and white like an adult. You have to give it time. And, and they will change for you as they grow, right? 
so you can see very clearly these animals they're, they're like a light charcoalish gray but they will turn black when they get older and that's like one of the most common common questions asked when when people are looking at um, black diamonds or black hybrids you know oh why is it not black why is it not black so I explained it in the last episode and now I'm trying to show you again here this is the newborn coloration and you see the adults as they get older like you show that male right there you show that female right there the actual mother in the back with all the thousand islands spotting that one back there all the way in the back yes see they're all dark so you have to allow for them to develop and this one is a male so is that all of them one two three four five six okay so we got four we got four um, males and yes. two females, right? Okay, so now let's pull out this one. And it's a good thing I didn't make this video earlier this morning when I came in. Because when I came in, there was only five live pups and this one, one um, stillborn one. So that just shows me that she wasn't done birthing yet. Okay. Now, we're gonna take a good look and examine what happened here. If I look at this pup, and I think if you guys look at this pup as well, you should be able to figure out what happened. So as I said, I always found it strange how can a pup that's fully formed, fully colored, fully developed, come out dead. But you see what happened back here? It's all mangled up, but yet everything over here is all fine, right? I think when this fish was born, one of these adults in here attacked it okay and in my opinion it's most likely the males that did it because the males can smell the hormones that's being released by the female when uh, when the fish are born so when they smell that on that first baby they're going crazy and they're attacking it because that's what causes them that that triggers their instinct to mate so given how clean this fish is all around, right, you see, I think this was actually born alive and it got attacked by the adults. That's why this is all mangled up right here. See, and it's torn. It's torn. And nothing else is decayed about it. See, all this is completely, oh, sorry. This, it's not decaying all around here at all. It's very fresh. But, and even all the way back to here, it's just on the bottom here okay so as i was saying the, the the flesh of the fish seems all clean nothing decaying nothing rotting um if i turn it back the only thing that seems a little soft and mushy is the tail right here but i'm gonna bet that that's from the adult ray grabbing latching onto this back half and chewing on it honestly that's what i feel happened here so i i do think this was a successful birth overall and it just got uh attacked and look we got a little bit more yogurt stuck on the net here all right so that's the indication that they did remain all right i'm gonna put away these pups now i'm probably gonna split it up i have a basket over there i'm gonna put some in the basket i'm gonna put some in into the tank over there and um, I hope you guys learned something again today. A, a lot of this, is, it's not a science for me, right? It's all trial and error and experience, right? So, you know, sometimes my theories could be correct, sometimes they could be incorrect. But, you know, we just, all, all, all we can do is just gather evidence from what happens and try to figure things out and then possibly try to figure out a way on how to prevent this uh, in the future. And if, if this is the situation, then probably what needs to be done is pregnant females, as they're nearing their birthing date, I probably have to like pull them up and put them in figure cages like this so that they can birth in the cage, right? And then uh, see if I have a result like this. And most likely I won't, right? But so if I don't, that means this theory is correct. But if I do, then that might mean something is happening internally with the mother. So it only takes, so it, it really takes this kind of experimentation and trial and error to, to figure these things out. I'm here to share with you guys and help you guys learn as well or learn um, at the same time as, as me, right? So again, thank you guys all for watching. 
please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, stay safe. Take care, guys. All right, it's time to say goodbye to this uh, lost soul here. There we go.